cream Rolling through the varsity of warm box of cookie cream New the book at moon shining down on P Street Fine women everywhere like living in the fantasy Children playing in the fountains of Olympic Park Hanging at the underground club popping out the dark Atlanta baby ain't nobody above it When Atlanta smiles, I love it Welcome back to the Black Atlas Podcast. My name is the Creo Grio. I'm Mrs. Motivate. And this is episode five. We Thank are them. plumbing through this. Yes. Plumbing. That was a weird choice of words. That's okay. We're getting okay. through it. We're getting through it. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving. Yeah. So how you doing, Asia? It's been honestly a great week for me. So I'm mm-hmm. really excited. A lot of great things are happening in the city, but a lot of great things have happened for me as well. So good week overall. What about you? Ashe, same. I'm filled with gratitude the things that i've witnessed in the last couple of weeks are just mind-blowing so i'm happy to be here that's dope so we're gonna get into our city trends asia what happened in the city this week y'all like i said it's been a great week for me it's been a great week for a lot of people so the first thing we're actually going to talk about are the street racing the street racing events that are happening in atlanta so since the pandemic has really kicked off, street racing in Atlanta has skyrocketed. The major areas that is taking place include Midtown as well as in Buckhead. Um, in those areas, the residents have really been complaining about the street racing that's occurring there. So for several reasons, for the endangerment that it has, for safety, people fear, you know, going out into the roads and things like that because of the street racing. So with that... Local politicians are receiving these complaints. They've been receiving it all year, honestly, if we're being very frank. They've been receiving it all year, and now they've decided to do something about it. So before we actually talk to you about what they're doing, what are your thoughts on street racing? Have you seen it ever before? Have you experienced it? Have you been a part of it, or is it so removed from you? I'm a Fast and Furious fan my whole life. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, but beyond that, I have not experienced it in Atlanta. I haven't seen it. Um... I'm not in Buckhead. That's not a part of town that I go to. So um, I don't know. I just think that safety is a priority. And as a community, we should um, we should keep each other safe. So Mm -hmm. I don't think that this is something that should be happening offsets or in uncontrolled areas. That's true. You know, I think for me, I haven't personally seen it, but I know just being on Atlanta highways is already dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I've seen racing happen on the highways. So I would actually probably prefer street racing over me being out there where naturally we can already go 70 everybody's going 80 Mm -hmm. and then you and your friend come along going 100 Mm -hmm. around all of us yeah so that to me is a big issue i suppose i don't really have an issue with street racing as long as you're doing it safely and away from me and like you said Mm -hmm. buckhead's away from me yeah right (laughs) that's y'all problem so (laughs) personally it's kind of like y'all deal with that good luck hopefully y'all can stay safe but with all of this coming back around, this is also brought back the topic of cash bail in Atlanta. So for those of you who don't know, starting around 2018, cash bail is when people have the ability to bail themselves out with a cash bond. And back in 2018, we actually voted to get rid of that in Atlanta for anything that was nonviolent specifically. Yeah. So if you committed a nonviolent act, what you were able to do is you might get arrested, you might get thrown into jail, but instead of waiting to see a judge, you can just sign your name, They know that you're going to return for your court date. You're welcome to leave. And so this has happened time and time again with these street racers that have violated this as well. And now with all the complaints coming from um, Buckhead, all the complaints coming from Midtown, all these different areas, they've decided to do something. Atlanta City Council member Michael Julian Bond is proposing that specifically for street racing, we bring something around where instead of being able to just sign your name, you actually have to stay in jail until a judge can meet with you. So this could be a weekend, this could be a couple of days, but until the judge is actually able to meet with you in person. A lot of people that have heard about this are concerned because they think that this is a slippery slope to lead back into those cash bonds to force people, even if it's a nonviolent crime, to have to pay those bonds. So there's arguments both ways because some people do say that this is a version of violence. Um, In fact, someone in Cobb County actually recently died from one of these street races. So in that regard, that's kind of how they're plugging it. Like, well, no, it's still an act of violence. People can still get hurt. People can still die. So, Command, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? Whether it is your thoughts on the cash bell bonds, on the proposal of having them coming back, on street racing, just what do you think about it? Well, I think that it's a step forward in eliminating cash bonds. Like, cash bonds have been an oppressive system that keeps people impoverished and keeps poverty people in and out of, the, out of the judicial system, you know? So when you weren't able to pay, you would stay in jail for longer. And so 
across the board, I think it's a good thing to eliminate them. I don't think it is right to specifically target one type of crime and say, just street racing, you'll have to stay in prison or jail until you can see a judge, mm -hmm. you know? So I think you got to pick or choose one, whatever the ju judicial process is moving forward. I think it has to be fair across the board. But at the end of the day, stop fucking racing. That's kind of <laughs> how I feel. Like find something else to do with your time. It's not that cool. And it's unsafe. So mm -hmm. there should be repercussions, uh, repercussions for their actions, but it just can't be tailored to this specific group, especially when we look at the demographic. It's mostly mm -hmm. black men, That's right? Real. So it could be a way of targeting black men um, for these specific crimes. Gotcha. And I think a lot of people have that concern. So you're definitely not the only one. In fact, Atlanta City Councilman Antonio Brown is working with private investors to see if we can make a specific lot for street racing. See? So that way we wouldn't even have to deal with the issue of staying in jail until a judge can meet you or cash bonds because now we would, have to have, we would find a regulated way mm -hmm. to have these races still occur in a safer manner but also be making some money off of it as well with the city's approval. That's leadership. Mm -hmm. right. That's looking at an issue, assessing it, and finding a way to resolve it mm -hmm. that compromises and works on both sides. Mm -hmm. So the city council will actually be voting on bonds um, legislation this week. So you are able to follow Atlanta Dakota to find out more information on street racing on the bond and just to see where things go. <laughs> All right. So moving right along to our next city trends. I don't know about you, but part of this podcast for me is kind of tapping into the ability of feeling like a superstar. So I don't need to be famous. You but look I like a superstar, baby. This hair down. Thank I feel you. like I never see you with I your hair down, down, but I love it. <laughs> I never wear it it's so cute. <laughs> oh. But thank you. Mm -hmm. So the goal is like, one, I want to feel like a superstar. But I think a lot of the times we feel like we got to go to New York or we got to go to Hollywood to really find that fame. And I think the cool thing is now here in the black Mecca in the heart of Atlanta, we're actually going to be getting that ourselves. So something known as the Black Music and Entertainment Walk of Fame is coming right here to Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm really excited. It's going to be directly across the street from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, and for those of you who don't know, that's where we've renovated the Georgia Dome, where we had all of our football games. They've renovated, Mercedes took over, so that whole area is really beautiful. But there's a lot of black history around the area as mm -hmm. well. So it's kind of... I'm kind of hesitant on this one because it leads you to the question of like, does Atlanta need another tourist attraction? I think so, because the ones that we have don't do it for me. Okay. I don't do all the Coca-Cola. Yeah. Ain't never been. Okay. I don't support um, aquariums and zoos and all that. Free to animals. Okay. And so... Other than that, like, what else do we really have for attractions? Like, we don't lost underground, which hurts. I that's grew up going to underground. So I think that we could use something that celebrates black culture, especially our music. All right. Well, <laughs> I guess I wasn't that, like, hard to convince. Because I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose. Because for me, like, I'm always, like, I'll go downtown. I'll go to CNN Center, go to Olympic Park. Like, it's so many different things around there. It's that for me, it was like, well, do we need anything else? Okay, I did forget about but, Olympic Park. I mean, it's just everything right there at that one stop. But I do like that it's going to be diversified a little bit because it's pulling you more into the city by True. getting you away from That traffic going to be horrible. Northside Drive is already the already worst. Bad. My God. But I think it'll be worth it, you know, to mm -hmm. see our legends in that way, you know? Well, the good thing is that construction starts in January, so we'll see what happens with our Black Walk of Fame, the Black Music and Entertainment Walk of Fame. So stay tuned and we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> Moving right along. All right. So this next story is really close to my heart. I'm assuming it's close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Our beloved Henry W. Grady High School. One second. I don't know if y'all know, but I'm sitting next to 2012 oh God. Miss <laughs> Grady High School. <laughs> I just had to let y'all know, okay? <laughs> so, okay, but in that regard, okay, in that regard, I was Miss Grady, but now I'll no longer be. You will be Miss Ida B. Webb. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> that brings it around, and hopefully y'all get it. So, Grady has officially decided to change its name. This all comes off of, initially, the students recommended a name change. So a naming committee has officially decided on the new name for Henry W. Grady High School, which is going to be Ida B. Wells High School. The naming committee com consisted of seven people. This included alum alumni. This included current students, um, school board members. But in total, four voted four voted for Wells, um, two voted for Midtown High School, and one voted for Piedmont High School. 
So ultimately, sources are saying that a lot of the students were leaning towards Midtown and we eventually went towards Ida B. Wells. But what is your thought? What name would you have gone with? Ida B. Wells. <laughs> It should have been okay. Ida B. Wells. It should have been from it the beginning. It should have been. Because, okay, look at the two um, options. You went to Grady, who was also a journalist, mm-hmm. and you look at Ida B. Wells, who is a journalist. There's one that I believe is worth celebrating more because she just was raw and real, and she documented things in this country that are horrific that we like to sweep under the rug. Then you have someone like Grady who advocated for segregation. Why would we carry that into the times that we're in now and even further? And as someone who's a Grady alum, I would much prefer to look back and say that I went to a high school um, that was progressive and that was honest about our history, you know? And so just some information about Ida B. Wells. Uh, As we mentioned, she was a, a journalist, a civil rights activist. She was also one of the founders of NAACP. She documented and explores, ex, ooh, sorry. She documented and exposed the horrors of lynching in the South and her pamphlet, Southern Horrors Lynch Laws, in all its phases. And at one point, she was considered the most famous black woman in America. Her newspaper office was even destroyed by a white mob, and eventually she had to flee the city of Memphis. So this woman is a boss. You yeah. want to talk about a warrior woman? This woman was vocal. She fought for our people, and she exposed things that this country likes to pretend didn't happen. So thank you, Ida B. Wells, and I think it's a great move. Well, regardless, they haven't actually made the final decision. The Atlanta School Board is going to vote on November 2nd. I urge you finally <laughs> to vote for Ida B. Wells. To vote for How do I get on this committee? That's I'm a, real. Is it because you are I, an alum? I am an alum. Yeah. So you have some input to give. But regardless, this discussion has sparked other discussions around the city of Atlanta. So a lot of our schools, whether it's APS, Fulton County, just around Atlanta, are named after people that we might not all be super proud to be calling our school. So let's take, for instance, your alma mater as well. (laughs) But Brown Middle School was actually named after Georgia Governor Joseph Emerson Brown, who opposed the abolition of slavery. Mm -hmm. So that's one school that is now actually talking about changing its name. We have other schools that include Forest Hill Academy that was named after Nathan Bedford Forrest, who was the Ku Klux Klan leader. Mm. So we know that we're in Georgia. We're in the heart of Georgia in the South. It's not strange or bizarre that we have all these schools named after people that aren't geared towards people of color, brown, black, whatever the case. But I'm just curious, like, have we gotten to a point where people should just be used to, like, being at schools that are named after maybe racist people, people that didn't actually want you in their school building? Because it just seems like the typical thing. Like, should we just get used to that as black students? Should we just get used to that as people of color? Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what school you're going to go to, there's history behind the name that came with it. So I'm just curious, like, what are you thinking? Yeah, I don't think we should get used to it. I don't think black folks should get used to anything that goes against our life force, that goes against um, what we deserve as people, which is humanity, mm. you know, to, to live life to the fullest. And these people directly um, opposed our freedom. Mm-hmm. And so as someone who went to Brown Middle School, like it's mostly black folks. It's black kids. So Joseph E. Brown turned around in his grave. You might as well change the name so he can rest in peace. <laughs> Okay. That's real. I think <laughs> I think the last thing that this also makes me think is just kind of like if you think about the Black Lives Matter streets that have been painted all over the U.S., is this performative or does changing the name of the school really have an impact? So to a certain extent, I think it does, because I'm one who believes that our words are spells and our words are powerful. That's why, to be honest, I don't say I can't breathe. Mm. I don't say that. Because I am breathing. I can breathe. We continue to breathe. That's That's not something I'm going to proclaim, right? Mm. And so when we carry these names of people who have harmed us, we continue to uplift their legacy and make their impacts more powerful. So I say stop (laughs) saying those things, stop honoring those people, and let it go. Mm -hmm. That's real. And I think that is a great way to end that city transit. So ultimately, that will wrap up our city trends and move us right along to our BBW. I like my girl's BBW. All right. So our BBW of the week, she is a staple in the West End community in Atlanta, really. Her name is Honeysuckle Moon. Honeysuckle Moon is an apothecary. Uh, She focuses on skin and uh, wellness. Mostly, most of her patients are women, um, but not just women need facials. Brothers, go ahead and get your facial. Mm. Treat yourself. So all of her products are 100% natural. Let me tell y'all. 
My first facial with Honeysuckle Moon changed my life. First of all, she's someone who puts intention into her work. I have learned that the energy of the service that she's receiving is very important. It felt like a ceremony, like mm -hmm. a prayer. You know what I mean? Um, the 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 love that she puts through her hands into her work is felt. And so after my facial and using her products for months, y'all, my skin don't clear up because I was struggling <laughs> for a minute, baby. Looking and Honeysuckle Moon got me right. Uh, one of my favorite products is her, I can't see the name of it right now. It's like a dragonfly antiseptic um, skin gel. It has burdock root and aloe vera. It heals scars up very, mm. very quickly. So all natural. Go ahead and hit up Honeysuckle Moon on Instagram. Moon, I love you. Thank you so much for your work. And uh, thank you for putting all that love and magic into your products. So that is our BBW of the week. Let's go ahead and get into our tea leaf discussion. All right, guys. So this week for our tea leaf discussion, I'm actually really excited because this is something that we kind of came up with on a whim. And with it being Halloween, getting closer to like costumes and makeup. She loves um, some costumes. Y'all love costumes and makeup. I'm working Who's on this, be this year? year. Do you know? Okay, so I wanted to be Coraline and I was going to be the other mm -hmm. mother. Serenity was going to be Coraline. Michael was going to be the dad. But when we tried to actually go find the costumes, we couldn't. So we went with what we could. And now I'm going to be Scar from The Lion King. Yes. And Mike is going to be the Invisible Man. And so we ultimately decided... How is we he going to be the Invisible Man? He's going to put on a hat, some like toilet tissues, some glasses, some white gloves. It's okay. Y'all going to see it come together. Okay. But I have faith. I believe. The point of it all is I get to play with makeup. And that is something that is really near and dear to my heart. Especially like you know me from high school. High school is a struggle. High school, what I I look back at those photos and I'm truly embarrassed for me. I'm embarrassed for my friends. She's still Miss Gray. <laughs> but it's just like makeup, and not just makeup specifically, but makeup and enhancements are something that I, I truly find fun. And when I talk mm -hmm. about enhancements, I'm talking about weave, fake nails, push up bra, butt plumpers, lip plump, like whatever it is that you need that takes you away from your natural state of how you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Personally, like, I love it all. But before we do, we didn't want to just talk from our perspective. We wanted to get some other people. So for a Black Atlas first, we actually went out to the public and we got their opinion on what they think of makeup as well as enhancements. So what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Black Atlas. Hi, guys. I am Key, the performer. I am a artist. Hey, thank you for having me. My name is Selena. We're super excited to have y'all today. Um, we're talking about enhancements. Mm-hmm makeup, enhancements on men, women. I really want to discuss like three specific things today. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about self-love and how makeup and enhancements play a role with that, um, as well as health. And then finally, dating and how mm -hmm. makeup enhancements impact that. So we're going to kick it off first with self-love. And when I talk about self-love, I'm really talking about like what role does makeup and enhancements play in your life and in your life? So like how frequently, because like for me, I wear makeup when we come on the shows. I wear makeup now that it's quarantine time, almost any time I go out, but because I don't go out often. So it's me like, oh, hi world. Mm -hmm. Hey there, I haven't seen you in a minute. But what role does makeup play for you? What role do enhancements, whether it's weave, nails, mm -hmm. anything? I'm a performer. So makeup, hair, nails, always got to stay on point. Like my dad gave me my motto, which is if you want to be a star, you have to look like one at all times, which is why in college, even though Georgia Southern had that cobblestone that could break your ankles, I was wearing heels on it. Well, even before quarantine happened, I didn't really do makeup unless I had something to do after work. So if I was going to go out for drinks or um, go with someone to celebrate their birthday, I'll do my makeup. But other than that, if I'm just seeing people from work, I'm not trying to impress you. So you don't get eyeliner at 9 a.m. from me. Makeup is fun. Like I usually just like color, you know, it's a chance to kind of make yourself pop a little more. Um, I think I did like a full beat face the first time and haven't done it again since for the show because I can't stand foundation. <laughs> Even if it's a really good foundation, you just you know, it's on your skin, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lashes take too long. So what I mostly do is I do my little eyebrows, some mascara. Lately, I've been liking my Fenty blush. OK, you know, okay. on the cheeks. Um, but beyond that, like I don't want to do too much. Like I like to look 
natural. Y'all know me. I'm natural, holistic, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So I like to look as close to my natural self as I can with, you know, maybe like a nice little pop. Hmm. I feel that. So I'm going to assume that you don't need makeup to feel comfortable. Oh, bad assumption. I don't think I need makeup to feel comfortable. No, I like having makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't need it to feel comfortable. Okay. <sighs> Maybe just my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that entirely. Because my eyebrows your are face non-existent. Look different with- <laughs> I feel completely comfortable when I'm able to like keep up with my maintenance. So like getting my eyebrows waxed. A lot of women won't say this, but getting the mustache waxed. If I'm able to do all that, I feel fine going anywhere without makeup. Um, but if I'm, if I'm not able to do that and I'm going to supermarket, I feel okay. Uh, if I'm not able to keep up with myself and I'm going to meet someone's family for the first time or meet someone for the first time or any type of like first impression, I'm going to have so much anxiety. Why? If you don't mind me asking. I don't know. So I put on makeup in the spots where I want to kind of touch up. Um, Unfortunately, they haven't found a way for us to have our favorite Instagram filter permanently following us. So I'm going to do some (laughs) concealer underneath my eyes so it doesn't look like I slept at 3 a.m., which I probably did. Or Mm -hmm. I'm going to put on some eyeliner to give that nice like um, almond shape that everybody likes now on Instagram. I like it too. It's super cute. Um, So I just feel like those parts of me that I would like to edit... um, I don't want someone to see that or it might just hinder the way I'll interact with somebody. I might just like cover my Mm. face a little bit more with my hair. I might do like a weird type of hat to cover that up and then end up just looking awkward when I'm pretty sure the person who I'm meeting won't care, but it'll just be very, very um, prominent in my mind. Like, why didn't you put on concealer today? (laughs) <laughs> but that's how I feel with lashes too. Really? So for me, I don't think I need them to feel comfortable. But if I'm being very transparent and honest, I would not film one of these episodes without makeup on. I asked myself that today. I was like, would you come on camera bare? I would not. You wouldn't? <laughs> I think that we should challenge ourselves. I think that next week we should both come on this camera bare. I think that is a challenge you Let's will have do to it. accept by yourself. Let's, okay. <laughs> if y'all want Asia to come on the show next week bare face, Drop a something. I don't drop care what. what you drop because I'm going to be dropping foundation on my skin regardless. Y'all might we should get do me a poll. without We're going to run shadow. a poll this week. <laughs> Vote yes for the bare mm. face. So my thing is, so, and I want to I wanna talk about this because even as Adam and I, as I'm being, I don't need makeup to feel comfortable. I go in front so of So then my, why aren't you coming on camera let, bare? No, no, let's address it because we got lights. We got okay. lights. And you know about lighting. I know and about lighting. lighting. highlights a lot of things you don't want highlighted. So, what you don't want highlighted? Boo! Perfect as you are. <sighs> All right. So, that's real. That's real. Come on. Real. Let's do it. I don't think I need it to feel comfortable, but on this show where people can repost, retweet, share it out, yeah, I want to look whatever I consider my best. If, if it were just going to the grocery store, if it's just babysitting, if it's going to work, I don't do makeup. My students well, you see You go bare yeah, to work. To, entirely. My students see makeup okay. on me on family teacher conference night. Okay, that's good to they know. They might see, but for me, it's important that my students know that I don't need makeup. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I very intentionally don't wear makeup to school mm-hmm. unless it's like Halloween, I'm going to do a full face of whatever the costume okay, is. Okay, so we have like, to bring your students into the show. That way you'll come their <laughs> face. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that is something good though, because for me, I do also consciously think about how frequently I'm wearing makeup because there is a health factor mm-hmm. to it. So the more that you wear, usually the more oil is seeping into your skin, things of that nature. And not just makeup, because we keep talking about makeup but when we talk about enhancement that's fake nails that's like putting your hand in ultraviolet light Ugh, to yeah, get gel things nails are horrible. Right. I gel my toes and it's and like, <laughs> as, sorry as much as I love them I'm like oh I ain't doing that you're shit you're literally again. putting your you're yeah. exposing yourself to ultraviolet light honestly lately I've definitely been picking up on the keeping my nails done and toes done and I do use gel and acrylic so you know when it comes to my nails yellow yeah no i try not to, not to do those things too much gotcha um but, but i mean that includes like because i think when people hear like enhancements we just think makeup yeah especially gentlemen makeup mm-hmm. but it's like enhancements can be fake nails whether it's hands toes it can be weave as well mm-hmm. and i think health wise a lot of people especially because you were educating me Mm-hmm. A lot of people aren't aware that, like, the weave that you put in your hair can be a health concern. So horrible. So could you, There's the same a, way you taught me, like, can you educate our public? Yeah, so there is a short documentary called Why Kanekalon Should Be Illegal. And 
if you're not familiar, uh, Kinecolon is braiding hair, right? Um, and is that how you say it? I've always said Kinecolon, Kinecolon. People say it differently. Okay, I say Kinecolon. Everybody in America say it differently. Differently, right. Like, right. Okay, so, so Kinecolon. Everybody know about Kinecolon, okay. but not everybody know this shit is killing us. Um, so Kinecolon is made with uh, chemicals that are listed as carcinogens. Carcinogens mm, are cancer-causing. Cancer. Um, two of the chemicals that it's made with, I hope I say this right, acrylonitrile and vinyl chloride. First of all, just the sound of you this can't shit. Say it. I, it don't it sound natural. like it belongs in your body. <laughs> vinyl chloride. Can't even pronounce it. Acrylonitrile. No, I don't need any of that. And so these chemicals seep into uh, your scalp and get into your thyroid areas. They can cause breast cancer, ovarian cancer, endometriosis. Mm. Um, and they. Um, they can really adversely affect your reproductive system. And so we know we got a bunch of black women walking around with these chemicals on top of our heads that eventually get down to our womb. Mm -hmm. And not just women. Yeah, not just women. Because I see my students wearing weave all the time. I teach elementary. Yeah. I see eight-year-olds, seven-year-olds, like all of that. And that kind of concerns me, not just even for the health factor, but like what is your self-image if at this young age you're being told, hey, put in this fake hair. Your hair isn't good enough. Like, let's mm-hmm, do this. Mm-hmm. And I, I understand that that night might not always be the root of it. I have mm-hmm. a stepdaughter. Mm-hmm. We put weave in her hair because it gets tiring to keep doing it. Yeah. But I think just being more aware of the brand of weave or the type of weave that you put in their hair. Are you talking to your child about, like, why am I doing this? It's not for your image. Yeah. It's because I'm tired. Like, yeah. Um, And we talk about using these things as enhancements. Do we have to teach our children to enhance what they are Mm. learning to love? Like they're just learning to love themselves. Why enhance, you know? So you mentioned like love and that kind of made me think about dating because Mm -hmm. I know your goal is always the best first impression. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we think that our best isn't just ourselves. And so our best becomes, well, let me make sure I get my hair done for this date. Let me make sure I got my nails done, got my eyebrows on right. Lashes are good. And some men might be like, let me make sure I got my beard (coughs) on. Let me make sure I got all this looking right. Let me make sure I got a fresh cut, all these good things. And so I'm just curious, like, how much makeup is too much for a first date? Because a lot of times, and we've seen videos, we've seen a lot of people talk about this, where they feel very surprised when they finally meet you. Mm -hmm. They, They met you on the first date. And then you, you, it rained, you went to sleep. Not it rained. You got, it, you got in the pool. Lord have mercy. And then all that makeup wipes away, that hair frizzes, but then they meet you. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of women, I'm going to say women specifically, feel like, you know, it's, it's our nature. I have every right to look how I want, whether it's a wig, whether it's a weave. It's my body. I'm going to do what I want. But for a first date, how much is too much? First date. Um, I haven't been on one in a very long time, but if I were to go on a first date, I would probably do something like this, probably maybe a color for the lip. But um, right now, all I have is concealer. Um, I drew on some eyebrows. There's a little bit of eyeliner underneath my hair and um, some highlight and lip gloss. Yeah. And I think that you actually do yourself a disservice when you come up with all that makeup. Mm -hmm. Because eventually he or she, they're going to see the real you. And are you comfortable with your real you? Let's talk about eventually. So when you're in a relationship, do you expect your partner to get cleaned up frequently? Like what is the occurrence of if you are just going on a date together, it's just you two, how often do you expect your partner to dress for your occasion? I expect him to step because I'm a step. So (laughs) we got to be on the same level. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll be seeing like the dating trends on uh, Twitter to where like they they take a picture of their feet and the girl always has on heels, but the dude has on like air forces or something. And I'm like, what? (laughs) If I have on heels and I'm going to step, you're going to step with me. (laughs) So me, I don't know. I just, if you started off grooming all the time, like this is literally what I'm expecting from you. Like I'm assuming you're capable of it. You showed me for the three months we dated before we started a relationship. You're capable of it consistently. Hey, but you just said that y'all five years oh, no, in. No, no, no. Me and my husband are different. Gonna... I'm just saying in general for the people that are out there in the dating pool. Oh, you're talking about us. I'm not going to the dating pool with nobody. <laughs> struggling <laughs> to find That's not shots fired. But I'm just saying the hit dog will holler. So I've been with my boyfriend for nine years. But the type of upkeep I expect is um, just making sure, you know, you look like you're taking care of yourself. Um, so making sure the nails are cut, and they're not looking like greasy, um, nobody's ashy on any locations. With with anything grooming wise, if I know it's a holiday and my family's going to be there, we're doing photos, like everybody else is dressing up. Hey, babe, we're going to wear all black today. Go get a haircut. You look great. All that. Now, does he have every right to tell me he's not? 
hell yeah, and he has, and he will if he's not feeling it. Mm-hmm. But for me, that is my expectation, is if I know that an event calls for a certain look, whether it's a black tie event, things like that, I'm going to dress the part. Yeah. But if it's you and I going on a date, if I want to look nice, I'm going to dress up. Will I say, hey, sweetie, I'm doing my makeup tonight. Wink, wink. Yeah, that's that's not like, so what are you doing? Because if I'm putting in effort, what are you doing? Yeah. But uh, aside from that, no, because I think he's handsome. And typically men don't really use a lot mm, of it. Men don't do much. Yeah. All right, guys, and we're going to end it on that note. So I want to humbly thank you all for coming on our show today. Thank you very much on behalf of all of Black Atlas. Thank you for your input. But we are going to move right along to our next segment, which is what the health. I feel great. I feel amazing today. All right. So what the health this week? We were talking about beauty, right? And as we all know, beauty starts on the inside, right? So we talk about all these enhancements, but if you really want to have a beautiful mind, body, and spirit, you got to have a healthy body. And uh, one great way to keep yourself healthy and clean is a colonic, also known as hydrotherapy. So it is literally getting water up your ass and washing it and flushing it out. And I know you might not expect that, but it directly relates to your skin, weight loss, uh, clearing out parasites, bacteria in your body, um, and just overall raising the vibration of, of your aura. So the human colon is what, five feet long. And in that whole tracking system over years, things get left behind. So they say you are what you eat, but you also are what you don't eliminate. Mm -hmm. So that McDonald's that you had when you was 10 or 15, some of that's still sitting there. So you still that little piece of McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so colonics are a great, great way to clean out your system. I personally, I did a series of colonics a couple years ago, and that was the major step in the progress of my health, but particularly for my skin. I saw direct results after um, clearing out... um, doing a clonic. One place that I love to go is Sacred Waters out in Fayetteville. It's black owned. Shout out to Jerea and Mike, my big brother and sister. Uh, Again, they're practitioners who put love and intention into their work. So go ahead and clean out your colon, y'all. It's so important. We really aren't educated on uh, these holistic practices that really change your life. So clean out your gut. That's it for our health topic of the I week. I liked it earlier um, when you said your shit stank. Okay, what I say earlier? <laughs> you were like, your ass stank, your shit stank. No, your for real. Okay, because, okay, let's talk about it, though. Having uh, piled up stuff in your gut um, can relate to your mood. That's why you're angry. That's why your skin looking crazy. That's why your hair not growing. Um, that's why things aren't flowing in your life because you are backed up. You're full of shit. Go clean Literally. out the shit. Okay, <laughs> as we say in Creole, I love it, boom down. If you're mm. Asian, you know what I mean. That means go wash your ass. Mm. I'm getting too detailed. <laughs> go get your colonic at Sacred Waters, y'all. Moving right along, we're gonna go to Lift Every Voice. Lift Every Voice and sing. All right, guys, so this week for Lift Every Voice, we are going to be highlighting Key the Performer. And this is something near and dear to my heart, the same way that you feel about like when we lift up like your friends from for the different health tips and things like that. Mm-hmm. This one is something so personal for personable for me because Key started off as my actual resident. So she's a year younger than me. When I was the RA at Georgia Southern, she was my resident. And just from the first day that we met, I knew she was talented. Mm-hmm. I knew that she was something so special because her entire aura, her being, her just her energy yes. is just so positive and lovely. And I mean, like she just that's her all the time. Yes. This isn't just Key for a photo shoot. She just is always popping and living it up. So. The thing that I love about Key, great dancer, great opera singer that a lot of people don't know. She is very skilled in opera. Wow. But I was really proud to see her after college find her own groove. And when I mean find her own groove, you're about to see she literally found her own groove. And so she kind of finds herself in like a disco world and bringing back disco, making it modern and mm-hmm. showing people how amazing it can be to really let yourself go and find Ashe. your beat. So let's please listen to Key, the performer, in Psychedelic Hotline. Psychedelic Hotline, this is Key. Here for this. Baby, 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 how you feel? 
because she found a niche. Yeah, for I sure. think that's the huge part of me is like she knew where her passion was. She found that niche and she's exploiting it in the best possible way. So y'all mm-hmm. check out Key K E E Two E's Key the Performer. You can find her on Instagram, on YouTube, any other place for social media. But check out Key the Performer. Her new single is Psychedelic Hotline, and that will conclude our lift every voice. All right, so that actually concludes the whole episode, episode five. We did it. Thank you all for joining us. Remember, comment those hearts so we can come up on this Y'all, let it uh, episode six, bare face. Let it die. We'll see you next week <laughs> on the Black Atlas podcast. Peace.